I salute you, sir, for your vision, and I am proud to give you your nation's highest civilian honor. It's not easy to build a business from scratch, but what's harder to do is create a business empire that will thrive for generations to come. Such companies exist today. We call them inspiration, but we don't often realize how big of an impact and change they have made in the business industry. And if we talk about such businesses, we have to talk about Walmart. Our company is built on people. The success we've had is because of our people. This retail company didn't just make the consumer's life easier with a unique business strategy, or in Walmart's case, strategies, but also made a fortune that made the founder of the business, the Walton family, the richest family in the United States. On March 29, 1918, Thomas Gibson Walton and Nancy Lee welcomed their child, Samuel Moore Walton, aka Sam Walton, into their life. Sam Walton was raised in a hard-working family that taught him the importance of consistent hard work in his early life. When Sam Walton was a teenage boy, he was already working multiple small jobs to support his family. But things weren't going smoothly at his home because of the tension building between Sam Walton's parents. To keep himself out of trouble, Sam Walton focused on other activities, such as sports and the Boy Scouts. From these activities, Sam Walton also learned other skills such as leadership, which helped him dearly when he decided to join the army when World War II began in 1939. He joined the military's intelligence corps as a member, where he was later promoted to captain. After the war ended in 1945, Sam Walton was already married and raising children. To support the family, Sam Walton purchased a Ben Franklin variety store in Newport, Arkansas at the age of 26 years old. At such a young age, Sam Walton made two mistakes when he was dealing with his store. First, he agreed to a contract that turned out to be way too expensive for him. He agreed to pay 5% of the sales the store will make. Later, it was found out that this was way more than any other variety store has ever paid. The second mistake was even greater than the first one, but let's talk about that one later. Even though Sam Walton agreed to such a ridiculous contract, he also found a mistake that was made by the other party. At the time, retail stores were required to buy their products from company outlets. But Sam Walton knew he could find places where products were being sold at a cheaper price. When he found out a clause in the contract that was counterproductive to this one rule, he took full advantage of it and started buying his products from other places. Because of this, he could reduce the price way below that of his other competitors. The idea was simple and effective, but this one idea will become the recipe for success in a couple of decades. Sam Walton was breaking and making rules that will provide better service for his customers. Because of his dedication to making his customers' lives better, his store quickly became a success and started to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in a matter of years. Because of this, he quickly repaid his $20,000 loan from his father-in-law. The business was growing and Sam Walton was already known as the leading man in the retail industry of Arkansas. But everything went downhill extremely fast because of something Sam Walton failed to see at the beginning of his journey. When Sam Walton was growing his business and gaining a reputation as a businessman, the store landlord, P.K. Holmes, decided to act on it. He liked the way the store was making money, so he thought that it would be great if he can regain control of the store and set his sons as businessmen there. Because of that, he refused to renew the contract. The second mistake was that when Sam Walton signed the contract in 1945, that contract didn't have any renewal contract clause, something very common in the retail industry. Because of that, P.K. Holmes could simply reject Sam Walton's renewal offer and later counter-offered him to buy the store from him. Suddenly, Sam Walton, a rising businessman with a successful retail shop, had to give it all up. One oversight cost him a good start, and now he had to start all over. After Sam Walton relocated his entire family, he started to find another place where he could start his business again. And with the help of his father-in-law, he managed to purchase a new location in Bentonville, Arkansas. Learning from his previous mistakes, he did everything right this time and took a 99-year lease. He opened up his second store in 1950 
and named it Walton's Five and Dime. He used his old customer service strategy here as well and quickly became a trustworthy retail store in the community. But Sam Walton understood this was just the beginning. He saw his strategy work in two different shops located in two different places. He knew this strategy would work in other places as well. So he decided to scout other places in different cities and to solve the transportation problem, Sam Walton bought a second-hand airplane. His brother, James Walton, was already a pilot. So this move made Sam Walton a huge profit in the upcoming year. Sam Walton and his brother were visiting new places and started to mark the potential locations to open up their retail store. He also came across the self-service system at that time and he fell in love with it. This strategy made customers bring their stuff to the cashier to check out rather than having employees do the same thing for them. This way, Sam Walton saw an opportunity to reduce his price even more by employing less workers. Sam Walton put this self-service into action at his other shops. The response was overwhelming and this one trick tripled his business. Sam Walton had enough to expand his empire into other states and he slowly became the greatest project entrepreneur in the retail chain industry. By the end of the 50s era, Sam Walton already owned 15 shops and all of them were profitable, but he also understood that his strategies could make significantly more money than it was making. What he wanted to do was make one store that had everything at a lower price for consumers. And to build such a store, he needed a bigger place. Such stores existed at the time, but those stores had limitations, like they were only located in cities and they had only offered discounts on select products. Sam Walton knew his strategy was better and he needed to act on this. But the company that franchised the Ben Franklin Variety Store refused this idea because it was less profitable for them. So Sam Walton mortgaged his home and loaned a whole lot of money. He opened an independent store named Walmart Discount City Store. Sam Walton did two things again. This time, these two things set Walmart apart from its competitors in a good way. First, he located his store in a small city, unlike other discount stores that prioritize their location choice in bigger cities. Even though these stores were located in big cities, big number of customers were coming from small cities to buy discount items. Sam Walton caught this big number of consumers by bringing the business to their location. Second, because of his store's huge success, other competitors decided not to move to the small cities where Sam Walton's operations were running. In five years, Sam Walton's Walmart stores had 18 branches in Arkansas, and in 1968, it opened its first store outside Arkansas. In 1969, Walmart became a corporation and changed its name to Walmart Stores Incorporated in 1970. Sam Walton continued to do things that helped him to reduce the prices of the products, such as keep operating for longer periods than other retail stores, keep the store close to his warehouse, and so forth. These strategies together made Walmart a successful business and it was making $44.2 million in sales. By the time of 1971, Walmart was operating in multiple states and operating 125 stores with 7,500 employees and total sales of $340.3 million. But the rapid growth came in 1980 when Walmart was operating 276 stores all over the country. But before the 80s, Walmart opened less than 30 stores per year for their expansion. In the 80s, Walmart was opening 100 stores per year. Walmart had close to 1,200 stores operating and generated $15.9 billion in sales in 1987. Walmart was the most powerful retail chain in the US in 1990 Today, Walmart is sitting on a fortune of over $343.74 billion, making the Walton family the richest family in the world, and also making Walmart the most successful company. This company successfully fought a couple of economical disasters in the USA and the pandemic in 2020 and kept profiting anyway. Walmart is still running with their customer satisfaction strategy, which makes them trustworthy and reliable in today's market. Walmart's continuous evolution and understanding of the market kept them the leading retail business and there's no sign of decline visible anytime soon. They're thriving and the success story will likely continue.